Hey everyone, it's Dylan from the Black Forest Wood Company and this week we're going to be showing you our process of creating this Star Wars themed table. I myself am not really a Star Wars nerd so I can't speak to what's going on uh, for the scene in this table but I do know that the goal was to recreate one of the scenes from the movie so maybe some of you people who know lots about Star Wars can kind of fill us in and let us know what's going on here. So we're going to cover the whole build process in this video and I hope you guys enjoy. For this piece, the client selected a slab of Canadian black walnut. So we begin by splitting this down the middle with our saw to create the river effect and then we'll flip the live edges in towards each other and get these pieces placed in the mold. Now this client is looking for us to recreate the scene of the Battle of Hoth and as I'm sure is obvious, uh, that was one of the biggest victories for the Galactic Empire and also one of the biggest single defeats for uh, the Rebel Alliance. And if I'm being honest, I'm reading this on Google, uh, this might shock some of you and I might have some people mad at me, but I have never seen an entire Star Wars movie in my life. Uh, it's not on purpose, it's not intentional, I have nothing against Star Wars, I've just never seen it. But now we've made a Star Wars table at least, so I guess that's something. Um, I think maybe this will inspire me to, to have to go watch Star Wars. But what we're doing here to recreate that scene of the Battle of Hoth is first we're doing a, like a metallic white base layer. So we're uh, applying a really high concentration of a white metallic pigment into that base layer so that we can kind of emulate the look of snow. And then once that cures, we can place in our figurines and pour another thin layer to secure everything in place before we go ahead and pour that final top layer. We don't usually put ads in our videos, as you guys notice, we hardly ever put ads in. Um, but we do like to sometimes take the time to promote our own product. So for this, we use our Black Forest Deep Resin. Uh, it's a product that we've had, it's obviously not manufactured by us here in our shop, it's manufactured by a large chemical company down in the United States. But they've produced a custom blend and formula based on our needs. So our resin performs really well in large volumes when you're going for maximum clarity. So all the bubbles release on their own. Uh, without cooling, you can pour to two inches. And then with cooling, we've pushed it as far as over six inches thick. Uh, and with extreme cooling, like a chilled water tank, we have a video coming up soon where we did like an 18 inch thick pour. So that's using our Black Forest Deep Resin. Uh, it's a good way for you guys to support the channel. If you like watching us, check out the products on our website. We use them, we stand behind them, so you guys can trust them and know that they're, they're of a good quality. Like, it'll be attached to him and then also attached to the ATT. So like, but does it have to be flying a little bit? I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna try and we maybe put a like- put piece of acrylic underneath. Do That's that or like, or like just super glue the one wing down so it's kind of like on an angle. Yeah. Really close to the ground sort of thing. I don't know. We'll have to kind of do some experimenting, I think. popsicle stick and then stick. scatter it from like up here so that it falls naturally like snow and but then settles more naturally that's what this will do isn't it no because you're compressing you're it as you drop it yeah but it's not wet so i don't think it'll compress it, i don't know okay wow that shows up on camera so well does it no. <laughs> so the slabs that we picked started at about three inches thick. Our base layer is about half an inch thick and then we do need some resin left on top of those pieces as well. So we need them at no greater than two inches thick. So what you're seeing us do here is we're actually trimming down the bottom off of everything. For some of them it actually works good because now it gives the appearance their legs are sunken into the snow but that wasn't actually the original intention. The only reason we're doing this is so that they fit and we did end up coming very very close in the end to hitting some of them. Just Ooh, we're gonna skim that. Okay, so it has to go even shorter. Yes, sir. It virtually needs to be level with the rocks. CA glue, the oh thick my, version. Oh my god. Well, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I need to glue it down, but not glue the plane down. Plane, ship, whatever. Oh, because it's supposed to fly? 
Yeah, so we're gonna put it and the other ship on top of the layer we're gonna pour now so they have the depth. I'm doing not opaque, but I'm doing white. I'm gonna pour deep and I'm gonna pour deep on Saturday to do the top pour and we're good. Okay, sweet. It'll be demolded like Wednesday-ish and the guys can work on it all through next week while John and I are gone. So now that all the figurines are super glued down, we're going to wait about half an hour to make sure they're all fully hardened. Then we're going to mix up about a millimeter of resin that we're going to pour and it's going to coat the whole surface to hold them all in permanently. And we're going to add a little bit of pigment so it gives it a little bit of depth. So once our base layer has fully cured and we've glued the figurines down in place using our CA glue, then we're pouring one more thin layer, just I guess kind of as an insurance policy to further hold everything in place. We don't want to fully rely on the CA glue, so we do a thin layer with our deep resin, we let that cure, and then we come back the following week and we pour the final layer using our Black Forest deep resin again. Um, you could, let's say, for some of these thinner layers, get away with using a coat resin uh, or something that cures quicker in 24 hours, but in our experience, you don't experience as good of a bond if you use the coating resins. They don't have as low of a viscosity and they don't take as long to cure, so therefore you're not going to get as much penetration into the edge of the wood. And after waiting for one week and demolding the piece, we can get it onto our Avid CNC machine for flattening. This part was kind of nerve wracking because like I mentioned earlier, we have a very small amount of resin that's sitting on top of these figurines. And you can imagine it would look pretty bad if we end up milling into the head of one of those figurines in there. So kind of holding our breath during this part and then the same, the same feeling is present during sanding as well because I think in the end it was like a millimeter or two millimeters left on top of some of these pieces so if you're not careful and you end up sanding too much you could be taking the head off one of those guys. From there we use our Festool track saw to go ahead and cut this piece down to size. Now one thing you'll notice here is that Jack is cutting this piece in multiple passes and even when only cutting through the solid wood sections. That is something that we found with the Festool track saw is that it might be slightly underpowered compared to some of the other saws on the market. So therefore, for some of the cuts where we're going through resin, like you can see here now, we're much better off just using our sliding panel saw as that thing has no problem cutting through this. critical step that usually takes place during the sanding process is filling all of the small voids and imperfections. So typically we like to use our Black Forest Quick Fix resin for this um, or some of our Black Forest CA glues. They dry much quicker than let's say our deep resin or our coat thin which the deep resin is seven days and the coat thin is 24 hours. Uh, the five minute obviously as the name implies cures in five minutes and the CA glues are even quicker. So Randy's just using a torch right now to get some of the air bubbles out of those holes and then once that's cured up we can continue on with our sanding and take this piece up to 320 grit before we apply our Black Horse Furniture. Now our furniture oil is a plant-based oil and wax product. Uh, it's categorized in the hard wax family of finishes and hard wax oils were originally designed as hardwood floor finishes so as you can imagine they are very, very durable, but the biggest, let's say, pro of them or thing that, that draw people towards them is the natural look and feel that they maintain over the piece. 
Unlike a polyurethane, which forms a layer over top of the piece of wood and essentially encapsulates the piece in a plastic coating, the oil and wax protects the piece by soaking into the wood with the oil, and then the wax forms a very thin protective coating over the wood that still allows you to feel all the detail of the grain. Uh, something else that we find oil finishes work really well for is uh, a high clarity uh, in, your, in your epoxy. Sometimes the polyurethanes, although they're more durable, they can cloud up the epoxy slightly more, whereas a well-applied oil finish with good technique can get amazing clarity even with sanding to only 320 grit. So our typical process that we like to do is two coats of the Black Forest Furniture Oil and we follow that up with two coats of our Black Forest Ceramics just for an extra layer of protection. Uh, the ceramic coating is especially important over an oil-based finish because you are going to have that compromised durability by using an oil finish so anything that you can do to improve that is always going to be recommended. This is our new method of transporting tables in the back of Jack's car. Company vehicle. I'm... Yeah. I, uh, for some reason, I thought you were like way further north. No. Stop there. Stop there. All right. Okay, would you mind closing my car up? jacket pocket. Oh good, good yeah. spot. Okay, who wants to do the, the revealing? It's your birthday present. Sure. All right. Oh. All right, that's really cool. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. Sweet. Good. It's very yeah. cool. Look at this laying over. I love it. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. What a work. So sweet. Yeah, that's cool. this little. Yeah. So are you keeping it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really like this piece yeah. too. That's it's cool. Yeah, there's no take backs at this point. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really awesome. Oh, I'm yeah. so glad you guys got the legs done in time. Yeah, too. they pulled through with the leg company that we work with, and these are like very high quality, like solid steel legs. So, awesome. yeah. good work. So yeah, kind of nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> that's gonna be a conversation piece for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, there you guys have it. That was our full process of creating this table and we even got to deliver it to the client here who was local, so that's an added bonus. Again, I'll kind of just go over some of the details of the piece and what we've used. We have Canadian black walnut that we've used for the slab. We've got a metallic white base layer to kind of emulate the look of snow. Then we placed our figurines in and then we topped it off with a final clear layer. Then once everything was cured, we coated it with our black horse furniture oil and some of our black horse ceramics and paired it with some legs from Forge 53. So that's the final product. Uh, if you guys can, one of the biggest things you can do to help us out is just leave a comment and let us know what you think about this piece. Uh, and if you really like us and want to see more content like this, you guys can subscribe below. And we do a couple videos a month like this where we cover the whole build process of a custom piece.